Hey guys, down to Utopia, and um, nope, I'm not bringing Nate some sandwiches today. I've got a little surprise in here. So, um, for any of you guys following us um, on some of the social media, you will have seen that there's been a 1200 Mirage here, a guy called Rick Lee, real nice bloke. Um, he has a cracked airbox on his Mirage, and apparently you can't get them anymore. So, my airbox for my Mirage was restored when we were doing the first uh, round on it. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loan in the airbox because we might or might not need it when we put mine back together, depending on what we do with the carbs. And um, I also had bought all new rubbers for it. So, better served on Rick's bike. So, we'll, uh, let's take it in, surprise Nate, and um, anyway, see what he's up to today. Mr. Nate! Hey Neil. How are you doing? Look what I have for you. Actually oh, for Rick. Some groceries. Oh wow. Look at that. That's in pretty nice shape, huh? It is. So I just told the guys outside that it's the airbox for the Mirage, so hopefully Rick can use that on yeah, his 1200. Until we get his repaired. Yeah, yeah. And, I got, and there's, there's new rubbers and there's a little airbox in the back. There, so. Very cool. No sense in it sitting in my shed when <laughs> it can be uh, working with yours. Absolutely. So, well, we'll put that right there. And you remember, speaking of Rick, this is uh, another one of his wonderful Lavertas. Right. So, guys, we were. We did some stuff on social media, I think with Instagram and Facebook, where we kind of ran a couple of little videos, but we yep. did, really didn't talk about it. Right. So I was thinking, if you're cool while we're here, maybe we could just, I don't know, get a little bit of background. It's a 750 SFC Laverne. Yep, that's a 1974 uh, This is example. 74. Yep, right. yep. Um, and, you know, this was a uh, homologation special, as it were. Um, which, you know, the factories had to produce so many bikes to go racing uh, in the race series. Um, this is the, the one from Laverta for the, uh, I assume the 750 Grand Prix class. Um, and very few examples were made. I don't know the exact production number. Maybe somebody can help us out by watching yeah, the video. Yeah, if anyone wants to drop us a comment, we're thinking it was about, what, 200 made? Two, two to, yeah, some, something very low. <laughs> yeah. Um, Two to four hundred, less than five hundred, if uh, if if my memory serves, and uh, I'm sure a lot of them were raced and uh, are no longer with us. So it's a, a pretty low production bike. Uh, you know they hold their value really well because of that, and because they're just darn good bikes. You know, 75 crank horsepower out of a 750 air cooled twin. Everything you see here is factory for the U.S. market. Um, even the little shorty two to one pipe. It is extremely loud. <laughs> That is a stock exhaust system. I mean, it's just brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, emissions, noise, who cares, right? Yeah, it was not really a factor with uh, the low production that they produce. Um, you know, you can kind of skirt some of those, um, or at least you could back then. Um, One thing I remember Rick had said to me, that this is not the original tank. Yeah, right, he took the original tank, which is equally as, you know, beautiful, but uh, just because of the uh, rarity and the value of them, um, and the fact that he rides it, uh, it's been put away uh, in storage, in dry mm. storage. So. And it makes sense. So who made, do you know who made this tank? I do not. I okay. do not, but they did a wonderful job at every, everywhere I've looked um, at, at other examples. This tank is very similar 
if not the same. So it looks yeah. the same. Yeah. I, I thought this was a really neat little thing. I don't want to touch it, but <laughs> yeah, I'll pop it open like there. You have to be careful. You know, all this plastic, and you know, it's it's really old. You just have to kind of be gentle and slow. But yeah, there's a, all his cards and uh, information are in there, and it holds holds a little bit there. So there were some people who got online, and there was a bit of debate about the how ugly the <laughs> yeah. bolt-on lights and turn signals were. Yeah. And I guess there are some people, I guess different models are different stuff. This is, this I thought was particularly interesting. That yep. They had to put this mirror on. Yeah, all, again, all of this US market uh, bolt-on equipment, so I'm sure it was by the lowest bidder. Uh, so a lot of people complain about it. I think it's cool. Um, you know, most of the race teams or people that bought this, this is the first things they took off right um but still to to be imported you have to have that uh accoutrement if you will so another neat feature that i thought was absolutely uh, that wouldn't have made sense to me why why a heel toe shifter on the gear shift yeah i mean i would imagine I mean, a race bike was that a thing of the same yeah i would, I would think so i think yeah. you know you don't have a quick shifter um mm -hmm. But that just kind of helps you locate uh, the gears more quickly. Um, you're probably healing for uh, upshifting, and you know, I don't, don't quote me on that. You know, I haven't ridden the bike yet, or put yeah, because it, it is it up and down. My Laverter is down and up. Yeah, right, like I'm standing up. Yeah, but then so, and this this case here looks very similar to to mine, but it. Was this factory cut around the sprocket? Yeah, as far as I can tell, all of these are factory cuts, um, even near our um, primary, or actually, would this be primary, for, the charging Would this unit. be for yeah. cooling? I, I mean, <laughs> I, mean <it's, laughs> I would think so. Uh, probably ease of, uh, of operation, or you can see if the chain broke pretty easily mm -hmm. without making any guesses. And these were endurance racers a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so things like that were, you know, accessibility was key. Uh, and of course, the, the right-hand side chain is pretty interesting when yeah. the majority of stuff we're used to seeing yeah. is on the left. It's yeah. another thing. Yep. I like that it's got the same gas cap as mine has. <laughs> These are Jota, the Jota bars, adjustable. Well, mm -hmm. And came again, to... like on our other, you know, Nip and Denso clocks, which were very similar to the CB750 uh, mm -hmm. in the early mm -hmm. 70s. So, uh, so, what, so what will you do to it while it's here? Well, I, mean, it seemed, I mean, is it in for... It runs great. All we're doing is just kind of going through it. Um, you know, we're gonna we're do the valve check, um, just do some service and, and, and put it on the dyno, and make sure we've got everything that um, she's she's supposed to have. Tune our points up, um, and then just make sure it's running nice and safe. And because you've got an extra ten horsepower at the mirrors on the dyno, right? Right. Fine Correct. Tuning, yep. So. Yep. You're hoping to find some power. Yeah, I don't expect as much, obviously, mm -hmm. because this is a race bred bike. Doesn't even have air filters. It's just straight open velocity stacks, and um, so I don't really. I just want to make sure it has everything. Coming around. Yeah, I just want to make sure it has everything that uh, you know the factory gave it. So and yeah. just make sure it's operating safe and uh, and ready to go. You know, obviously these are aftermarket tires, uh, things like that. Through the years that you know have gone on there, I have seen examples for sale with original tires and. And it approaches yeah. six figures, uh, these bikes do, when, when in that condition. But Rick um, rides this. The Rick rides it. Um, I've seen him often at bike nights and all. And, uh, I mean, look yeah. at how far back the pegs are on the bars. I mean, I mean yep. I'm sure and, uh, he must have an intimate relationship with his chiropractor. Right. <laughs> or just better health than, uh, general health than I am at uh, in my 40s. Because <laughs> this so is very uncomfortable to sit on. 74, you said, yeah. yes. Yes, sir. Yep, yep. Disc well, brakes, you know, early ones, uh, like the SFC ones, had a really beautiful drum set up. Uh, this is a disc breaker. Right. Um, which is probably better, but um, yeah, very, very, very cool stuff. Yeah, it's great. So, like I said, if anyone's got some information on how many were made or any more information, just drop yeah. us a line on it because it's. Yeah, this is all a bit of a learning curve for us, but I thought you might enjoy to see this today and hopefully that airbox will work for Rick. So thanks for coming down to Zootopia again. It's just always great to see what Nate's working on here. So hopefully you enjoyed a little insight to a, a very rare, very original 1970s Laverta 750 SFC. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Nate. <laughs> yeah, no problem. <laughs>